Welcome to my clubhouse. My name is Sally Cologne, and I am live on Amazon Live and YouTube. And I just want to say that I'm so excited for this next guest. It's going to be a hoot. Hold on to your chair. It's about to get crazy. My next guest is a producer and production executive. Please help me welcome Brian Rader. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you because you and I met on Clubhouse. We did. And you were doing Bri Brian's Raider, Brian Raider's Coffee Talk, which, by the way, he brought me a cup. Isn't that so sweet? I have my Brian Raider Coffee Talk mug. Cheers. Cheers. And I plucked him out of the world of Clubhouse and brought him onto the studio. And so my first question to you is, first of all, welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Who is Brian Raider? God, I wish I knew. Um, <laughs> well. I, re I really do wish I knew. Um, but the honest truth is I'm a connector by nature. Um, and it's my big mouth that gets me into trouble most times. But a lot of times it opens some amazing doors. Yeah, and I have to say that you and I met and then we met in real life. Yes, we did. And I pitched some of my shows to you. You sure did. And I will say in the beginning when I sent you a DM mm -hmm. and I said, Brian, this is when we first met. And I sure. said, Brian, you know, I have this show, blah, blah, blah. You're like, have your people call my people. Well, here's the thing, and this is the truth. Yes. Um, when I got into the business, nobody gave me anything. Mm. And so I've swept New York City streets. Oh, wow. Um, because the set would see me before they left home. Mm. Um, I would go get people coffee when they didn't ask for coffee okay. and ask if they want coffee. And I did a lot of things in the beginning, the real grunt work, even someone who already had been working in finance and had a job. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I always leave behind is a memory. Mm. And so I want people to remember me so when they meet me the next time, they know. And I, I had to go through you know, the hardships in the beginning of the industry. Right. I didn't make a lot of money out of the gate. Mm -hmm. I was making good money in finance. And you know, so for me, you have to show me that you really want it. Right, so, so pursuing? That's right. Got it. So when you send me an email, I'm gonna blow you off. Okay, the first time. Oh, for sure. For for Excuse sure, <laughs> for sure. I got an yeah. idea. Who doesn't have an Who idea? Who doesn't? I, I understand that completely. What person in the world doesn't say, I think I can create a show? Right. Well, you and I both, I feel like, because once my documentary got out there and people were like, oh, Sally, a documentarian, I would get text, probably not as many as you, but DMs on Facebook. I have an idea. I have a show idea. I could be driving in a car with one of my girlfriends. She's like, oh, my God, I have a show idea. I'm like, are you serious right now? Yeah. Like, we're having girl time right now. I don't Sally, care about your show idea. I think everyone in my life, including my parents, <laughs> my family, um, I, I, I think every person, when they know you're connected to that yeah. world, says, I have a great idea. Have your, have, your parents are here. Have you guys said that? I have a show idea? I'm in the middle of writing a script. <laughs> <laughs> my, dad, my dad's in the middle of writing. Uh, uh, he came to me, and I'm not kidding you. Yeah. My, I'm, this, is a tr this is for real. My dad came to me a, a few months ago, and he goes, got this great idea. I was like, OK, dad. And he goes, you know what? I I'm going to write something. And I said, sure you are. And he started writing. Ooh. And now here's the thing. Most people start writing and they get a few pages in, yeah. but then they stop. You know what I and so what I do with everyone, including my dad, which he doesn't know until right now, right. is when he's done writing it, I'll read it. Okay. When he's done when writing he's done. it. When he's done. Okay, but when let he me... says it's yes. done, I will read it. Then but read it. along the process, he's gonna say, he said to me, I'm writing. I think I'm right. I wrote a bunch of pages. The next day, I'm going to write some right. more. That's everyone in, Listen, anyone in and out of Hollywood. Ain't nobody got time for that, people. Right. Okay? You, we, when it's done, then we're going to read it. But you know, you right. said something, and I want to go back to it. Because this is my whole philosophy in the last, I would say, couple of months. That it's really easy to start something. Right? Everybody has an idea. And people go in and they have an idea and then, but it's so hard to finish. And you know what I call that? And it's actually a book. I'm writing a new book. I, you don't even know this. Exclusive right, right now. Writing a new book with my producer is called Con... Can we say the name? Not really. She says no. Okay, she says no. As okay. your, your non-attorney non <laughs> producer friend, yes. 
Don't mention the name. Don't mention the name. Okay, but it has to do with starting and not finishing. So I love that you said that because I always talk about in the deep end is where people fail yep. because they go a little bit too far and then all of a sudden all the thoughts, oh my God, I'm going to run out of money. What if people don't like it? What if people don't like me? Blah, blah, blah. And they start going back to the shallow end where it's comfortable. Yeah. I think I pride myself on finishing things. Mm, I do too. I think that's why we get along. Yeah. So, I I, and I think that that stems from, and I'll go personal. Yeah. I was learning disabled as a kid. So, you know, not being able to read and a lot of people sat with me Mm. and having the ability to have to sit through the craziness to try to understand words is tough. Mm. It's really hard. Yeah. When you, it doesn't click. Numbers, Numbers I got Numbers all day. I got numbers. All day. Got numbers. Yeah. But I didn't understand it. And so I had to work really hard and I had to work really hard in school just to maintain a B average. And I had to work really hard in college to really stay there. Mm-hmm. Now, was I the best student? By far not. Did I party my ass off? I sure did. Oh yeah. But, <laughs> but yeah. I had to do those things. Mm-hmm. And this goes back to where this conversation started on my first start at my first set. I started the day I was the first person there. I was an hour early. When I left set, I was the last person there and I was sweeping the street. Mm, you know what I call that? The anticipator. Yeah. You anticipate. You don't wait for someone to tell you to do it. No. You anticipate it. So people told me in the beginning when I said, I'm going to go be in the movie business. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go be in the TV business. I'm leaving you know, Wall Street. I'm leaving finance. Right. I walked onto a set. I'm not doing that anymore. People said, you're crazy. Nobody makes it. Nobody makes money. Nobody does it. Right? Did that, did that give you more like... Oh, really? Nobody does it? Well, Watch me do it now. Well, of course. Of but, course. But, well, of course. Yeah. And you don't say that to someone like me because I'm going to go accomplish right. it. Right, yeah. You know, I think, and that goes back to when you start something, you finish it. Mm-hmm. So for the people that are out there, if you have a great idea and you want to pitch people, mm-hmm. flush your idea all the way out. All the way out. Because sure you have one it, chance. You got one shot yep. to present it to anyone it should be the best thing you've got, even if it takes you another month, right. another year. Yep. Just get it as best as you can possibly do, and then you know when you hand it off, it's the best you, shot it's you got. It's the best. One thing that you mentioned is that you started in Wall Street. I you did. Numbers, I started in banking. Numbers, I am a numbers guy. You're a numbers guy, and you worked, I have it right here, you worked at two companies. I did. Were, JP Morgan and Wells Fargo, right? So I am not a numbers person. Sure. And you and I met and when yeah. you were telling when you were yeah. talking to me, it's like mm-hmm. I was trying to grab it all, mm-hmm. but I'm not a numbers yeah. person. And that's why I keep people around like, you're my new friend, but my friend Andy, <laughs> who's also Wall Street, by the way. Oh, cool. Yes. So he teaches me a lot of stuff that I yeah. don't know. I don't like numbers, and that's why I have producer Angie. She is MBA, she's a numbers girl. Cool. And so you gotta like when when you're when there's, when you have a deficiency, and that's not a great word, but when you have a deficiency, sure. you want to surround yourself with people that don't have that deficiency, yeah. right, to balance you out. Yep. So, who are your mentors in your life? Oh Jesus, um, this is a tough one because most people go to famous people, sure, celebrities, or parents, mo- or, or 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 parents, right. or people that you know have pushed you along the way. Please tell me your parents because they're right there. I, I can if you say- don't say your parents, oh my God, my heart. No, no, no. So, 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 he, so here's the, here's the honest truth. Yes. Tell me honest. My parents are fantastic. Yes. My parents molded and shaped who I am. Yeah. So, um, earlier, I think we were just joking around live. I got my charisma and my ability to talk from my dad. Your dad. Good job, pops. Yeah. Good job, pops. And, 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 and he's getting emotional. <laughs> I am, I, I am. love that. And, and I got yeah. my sweetness from my mom. Oh, so, good job, mama. So the, the truth, <laughs> yeah. So, the, so the, the truth is, is I do have a really big heart and that comes from my mom. You do. And I have a really big mouth and that comes from my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I love your and, laugh. And, and, it's it's and, awesome. And it's those two things yeah. of why people gravitate toward me. Mm-hmm. It's the reason why people came to my clubhouse. Mm-hmm. It's the reason why when I talk, people listen. Yes. It's because I've gone through all the craziness. I've been on over 150 sets. I've built thousands of budgets. Yeah. I've pitched shows to everyone. I've had shows get picked up and then canned. I've been through the ringer. Yeah. I've got, I, I didn't know how to make deals in the beginning. Right. I got shot on. Yeah. 
I, you know, all of the things that you that you could get knocked down by, I learned from those things mm. and I built on those things. And you have so much experience now. I do now. Like you learned so much. And I want to I do now. You do now. You know, but you know what? Sometimes we have ooh, I don't like the way that looks. Hang on. <laughs> That's why it's good to have the monitor there. It's good and it's bad. So you've worked on so many great shows. I've the, worked on a bunch of good You shows, have. So. And one of my favorites that you worked on was the Cabanero. Ca Cabanero effect. Cabanero yeah. effect. If you haven't seen that show, it's hilarious. Is it still airing? It's still on True TV. Syndication, if you, True TV. Yeah. Okay, oh, good. If, if you look um, at the first two or three, uh, th two or three seasons, mm -hmm. you'll see my name in the credits. Um, I'm credited as executive in charge of production. Nice. Um, that's a big. That's a big title. It's the tallest title. Hello. Um, you can't get bigger than right. what an executive in charge on a show. Right. Um, all the dollars and cents for the show, multi-million dollar show, pass through my fingers at all wow. times for the show. So kind of like a line producer. So for I hire a line producer. You hire the line producer. Okay. So I hire line producers, production managers, coordinators. Uh, they hire production assistants, okay. etc. But I hire a line producer to oversee the show. They report to me. Okay. I'm not always on set. Uh, a lot of times I'm dealing with numbers, accounting, mm -hmm. finance, mm -hmm. the network um, in, in that way. And yeah, and it was a really fun show and Michael's a doll. So it, it was, it, right. it, plus magic is so cool. So cool. Like, first of all, I'm sitting this close to him. Just magic when we're not- Magic Johnson, we're talking about ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. But go ahead. No, no. So, <laughs> so uh, mag magic is uh, uh, awesome. And I've done more than one magic series that is really of a reality nature. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and, it's, and, it, and it's just really fun to sit next to someone while they're doing tricks and they're not on camera. Right. Because okay. he would on a daily basis mess with me and it's so much fun. I love that, me. oh my God. I would love to be messed yeah. with yeah. by Magic Johnson. Yeah. In 2008, you had a light bulb moment. I sure did. Tell us about that moment. I sure did. Well, I feel like there is an energy that goes around people and, uh, and situations and doors that present themselves in unique ways. Mm. And I was wearing something similar, except I was wearing nicer pants and shoes and a, and, a, and, a tow, and a tie. And I was down on Wall Street. I was taking a meeting, a finance meeting, and I stumbled upon a set. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people don't know that actually I was in front of the camera before I was behind the camera. Early on in my college years, I got really lucky and booked a commercial uh, for IO Digital Cable. That um, I then got semi-represented. They then sent my Polaroid in. I got booked on the show Sex in the City. So this is on camera we're this talking about? On camera. In on front camera. Of, in Ooh, front look of at the you. camera. I was like 20 years old. Okay. And um, I did three things back to back that were entertainment related. And I, they came real quick. And then I realized quickly that really wasn't fun. That wasn't your thing. Yeah. But, but again, I did this commercial. I then was on Sex in the City on season five, episode five. You guys could check me out. Check Hanging at out. the bar. <laughs> um, and then I um, also did a runway show for fashion for guest fashion. Okay. And I did these things quick and I was like enamored by the people behind the scenes running around, mm -hmm. lots of stuff happening, lots going on. And I was like, what are these people doing? And then I, right. st I started asking questions to those people. Yeah. And so in my head, when I was in New York, I'm in finance and I'm like, look, you graduate school, you got to make money, you got to get a job. I wasn't thinking about like, what do I love mm -hmm. and what do I want to be doing? Mm -hmm. I thought about like, how could I make money and a money finance that is money. I'll go work and I'll go do those things and I'll, I'll sell people and I'll do that. But the honest truth was I've always been a fan of movies. Mm -hmm. Every Sunday, my mom and my dad would take me to watch movies. They watch movies. Now we talk about movies. Uh, I had a coffee table book uh, about MGM studios that I fell in love with years awesome. ago. My mom was asking about what are, look at all these people doing behind set. They were just at my house, just asking me all these <laughs> stuff. And so I, I've always had a, a fascination with moving objects and with film and TV. Mm. I remember, you know, uh, even at times, yes, I had a lot of friends, right. but I didn't have as many close, close friends as I probably should have at a younger age. Sure. And so because I didn't like to read and I wasn't good at it, I watched stuff. Movies. Now, let me ask you this. Yeah. Because everybody knows, anyone that knows me knows that my movie that changed my life at six years old, yep. I knew I was going to be a filmmaker after the, watching this movie, yep. Wizard of Oz. Cool. So I want to know you what You want to ask me. I want to ask you what and, was the movie. And I know the movie All as right, a kid. All right, let's go. What was it? Goonies. Goonies? Yeah. Really? Why Goonies? Because, because here's the thing with Goonies. It's a group of friends. Yes. They're all different. They're all unique. It's an adventure. Mm. You're all going along for a ride. Mm. 
and the end has a really happy ending. Mm. So I think that like all those things for me, it was a movie that I remember watching like crazy at a really young age. And then one more movie that I have to plug. Which one? called weird science of course hello so so those are two <laughs> weird science i can watch I, I yeah. can watch weird science a hundred <laughs> times yeah and quote all the crazy quotes right. and lisa he doesn't even have a license you know like <laughs> i could i could literally go through you know th- those moments in time and i'm, I'm just going to say one more because it's pivotal okay. i actually wrote i um i wrote my college essay based on it and it was, um, or high school or college, I don't remember it, but it was Rudy. Rudy! And so, you know. Rudy! 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 <laughs> yeah. Rudy! So, so. <laughs> yes. The thing that I, that, that, you know, it's interesting, all of these movies actually have in common is the underdog. Mm. Aww. So, you know, I, I think the, the thing for me is I, I was an underdog. Mm-hmm. I've always been an underdog. Mm-hmm. Um, my, my, my education. Yeah. Um, and, and then moving, you know, and, and then moving into sports. I mean, I was probably one of the worst kids at basketball. Mm -hmm. I didn't make my middle school team, but I was a starting five person by the, by the, my senior year. Same thing with volleyball. When I first started, I wasn't good, but then I became the captain of the high school team. So, Mm. so this is goes back to kind of where this all started and even your first question Mm -hmm. just because you're not good at something now doesn't mean in the future you won't be oh i love that i love that yes that (laughs) deserves a round of applause i love that moment you know being a documentarian i love a good soundbite that was beautiful. I love that soundbite. Mm. So let's fast forward to where we are today. Because, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Because <laughs> you're doing a lot. You're doing a yeah, lot. I'm and, try- well, and, you, and by the way, you've yeah. worked for major, you know, companies like yes. Warner Brothers yep. and a bunch of different companies. But you, you have your own production company, which I love. I and you and I are going to do a project together, and I'm looking forward to it. As long as you bring me the project and it is I have flushed it. out. And I it's already have it. Completely flushed out, Sally. We yeah. can talk about we're, working we're, together. We're doing a meeting after this, okay? Because <laughs> I have two shows right. that I'm ready. After right. Oh, that now script, I'm of that script goes first. <laughs> I love how he jumps in. Go, Dad. Go, Dad. <laughs> <laughs> but you're working on a bunch of stuff, and you yeah. have your own shows. And yep. so. For those that are watching right now, because there's a lot of people that have ideas, just like your dad, just like me, just like, you know, Jumi and I are working on a show, Angie and I, you know, there's so many ideas, but it's really hard to find an original idea, as you know, because, right. And reality TV is the rage. I mean, it's all the rage. Everybody wants to do reality TV. People are becoming celebrities because of reality TV. So it's the thing. So I'm focused on reality TV, even though I do documentaries. So that's your focus too, though, right? I'm going to take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. So yes and no. Okay. Explain. Um, Reality TV programming is great, Mm -hmm. um, but that is not necessarily where the money is. Okay. And it's also not where my heart is. Mm. And so I'm doing reality TV with the notion of eventually doing scripted projects. Now, early on in my career, I did film. I personally don't like films to produce them. They take a lot of effort in the indie world. If you're not working on a big project, I'm attached to one movie right now as a producer, and it's because I believe in what this subject matter is. And I'm happy to tell. I'm happy to share a little bit. Mention it. Plug it. it, it, It's on addiction. Okay. Um, It's I. I definitely have had my bouts with drinking, smoking, uh, uh, poker, uh, all kinds of things that people can get addicted to. Do you have an addictive Um, personality? I for sure have an addictive personality. It is the reason why I now jog every day and post it on my social to keep myself accountable. Good for you. It is uh, why at times I've been crazy addicted to sports Mm -hmm. or fitness. Mm -hmm. Um, It's I think it's embedded in your blood. I have to say something. I just had a deja vu moment. I, I had a deja vu moment. This moment happened in my dream. You, me interviewing yeah. you, okay. you saying what you just said, yeah. and Jumi sitting right there. Okay. Wow. Cool. I have chills. Oh, great. My whole body chills okay. right now. Well, then you know what that means to me? What does that mean? You're on the right path. I love that. Just keep doing <laughs> what you're I mean, doing. Come on. Just keep doing what that you're doing. That was a 
amazing. Yeah. Okay, I had to like stop you and say that. You know, we, that was we, a moment. You know, you know, we all have those moments where we feel Ooh. like we're in the right place at the right time. Like yes. I, like me walking onto a film set, convincing a producer, and I went a different route. Mm-hmm. We all have these these forks in the road where they show up. And to me, it reminds me of like the matrix walking through, you know, the pathway, yes. you know, and it's yes. like, do you go this way or do you go that way? Blue pill or red pill? Do I, I take that. it? Right. Do I take the chance? Do I not? Right. And here's what I say for anyone that's listening right now. Take the chance. Take the chance. I love Just that. go do it. Nike says it best. Just do it. Just Absolutely. Do it. So what is your dream project? If, if, if I, I was, if I was yeah. an investor and I'm saying, Brian, I'm yeah. going to give you a hundred million. Yeah. Cause nowadays, you know, yeah. avatar. Yeah. yeah. So hundred million dollars. Yeah. What would you use the money for on a, on a project? It's gotta be one project. One project. <sighs> yeah. I got to come back to you on this. Really? So here, here I thought you would just know. You, you probably, you would think that. Yeah. But there's so much marketing that goes in, times change. Yeah. If I do something now, is it going to be relevant in two or three years? Mm. Um, there's so many different things that come into it, in, encapsulating what that looks like. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Paramount just did it, an amazing series on the God on the Godfather. What it took to make the Godfather. Ugh. They just literally wait. Where is that? It's on Paramount. It's on Paramount. Yeah. The, the it's a scripted network. series. The network. That's amazing. Is it good, Dad? Yeah. That's, that's it, fantastic. So, so, I'm going to watch it. And here's it. the reason why I think it's fantastic. It shows how much you have to go through to get the project made in the way you Ooh. want to make that project. So everyone that wants to be in this business, Dad, including you, did you watch the whole thing? Yes. Everyone that's in this business needs to watch that. Because people need to know how hard it is. People oh. think that creating a show or creating a, a documentary, which oh. is a different beast, you know, I've done it, oh. I have it, you know, is easy. It's not easy. It's so hard. And it's, man, if you're not tenacious, don't even get in this business. So there's two things. There's creating the show. Yes. And then there's also working on shows and being a freelancer in the business, right? right? For 15 years, I've been a freelancer. Mm. Uh, nobody paid me a W-2. Right. No one. Same. Never got a, not a, never a W2. Yep. You never know when your next check is, when your next project is. You hustle. Yep. Uh, Yesterday on my, um, on my TikTok, I posted me on a, uh, uh, on a TV show called Surprise Instant Christmas. And what I was actually doing with texting, because I remember what was going on that day, Mm -hmm. I was setting up my next project, the next show to get hired on while they were filming and they caught me. And I was sitting there going like this. (laughs) And I remember that day shooting with Shaq and Ludacris. Yeah. And I remember them being on set, me talking to them and doing the whole thing. But at the same time, I'm work, I'm negotiating. I'm doing a deal for my next show. Wow. So I could leave Atlanta, go back to LA, come and then have a couple have days off. To, to and then have the next thing to work on. Listen, I I'm with you. I just I myself just went through that. I left a big metaverse. You know, I was yeah. working on a big metaverse project yeah. in Malibu. That ended a couple of weeks ago. And I'm like, Angie. Well, help me out here. What's yeah. next? You know, cause it is, this business is like one project after another. After and so it's a hustle. It's, it's a, a hustle. constant hustle. So, so, so the thing is my production company pictures up entertainment that mm-hmm. I run with my producing partner, Lewis Totchett. You mm-hmm. have to have a lot of irons in the fire. Yeah. We have 20 shows at any given time. We have ones that are at networks right now that we're pitching. We're in co-productions with some of the biggest production companies in Hollywood. We set ourselves up in development. We have right. multiple things we're developing. We're cutting stuff. I'm on Clubhouse on and off reviewing people's projects like you and now right. my dad and everybody else because people want to get in the business. Yeah, absolutely. Because, and, they, and they literally think it's that easy. I know this guy. I'll give my project. It's going to get a green light. We're all millionaires. <laughs> Don't Show's we wish it go. worked that way? I wish now, it worked that way. Now, the truth is it takes six months to a year to develop a show. Mm-hmm. It takes six months to take a show out. It takes another three months for the network to give it a thumbs up. The thumbs up only comes to less than 1% of all shows pitched. That means if a network, CBS, NBC, ABC, all the streamers, if you pitch your show to them and it's the best show in the world, 1% chance. One. Are you listening, Jumi? Yeah. Because Jumi's always, because we're creating a show right now yeah. and she's not really in the entertainment industry. So sure. she's learning as we go. Sure. That was good to hear that, right? All of that. Yeah. Because It's cause, so hard. Yeah. It's and hard. then, and then I just worked on a, a spec pilot. For a for with A and E and Lifetime, we got into the whole development of shooting the pilot. Yeah, we never shot it. Wow. So, Why? So 
There's a lot of reasons, and I'm not going to say that live okay. or recorded. Right. Okay, we'll talk later. Call me. But yes, but that happens all the time. Right. Shows go, and then the network says we don't want to make the show, and they for shelve whatever it, reason, right? They shelve it. They just say we're not making it. Wow. They give you X amount of money. You sure. start the development process. You're in. You you got the green light. Right. You're in production. Yeah. You're in, ready to go. You start doing all the things. You could do casting. You could do different pieces, and then they pull the plug. Do you get to keep the money though? You get to. Well, <laughs> that's what I want to know. Because if they're saying you can't do it, do you, yeah. do you keep the money. So this goes back to something you and I talked about on Clubhouse. Yeah. Depends on what your contract mm. says. That's why you always need a good An, attorney. A good entertainment attorney. Get an attorney. Hello. First rule. First rule. First rule of Fight Club. Yeah. <laughs> get an entertainment get attorney. Get an entertainment attorney. So, or, or yes. Read the contract. Or read the contract, yeah. producer Angie says. Even I love you, that. Here's the thing, guys. Yes. You could be the greatest reader in the world. And I told you this. Yes. I told you this. Yes, I know right. about 70, 80% of contracts, yep. and I'm not a good reader, and I still know the stuff. Yep. I know the buzzwords. I know what to look for. But here's the truth. Attorneys are attorneys for a reason. You're right. And they charge a lot of freaking money or, for a reason. Or they or, don't charge a lot of money if you work off a percentage. See, Angie? I was telling Angie about that. Brian has an attorney that works off a percentage, so no money up front. Hey, Patrick. So, so we're Hi, having, Patrick. 5%, so, bro. 5%. <laughs> So, Angie, we're having a meeting with Patrick. All right, he's going to set it up. Right. Let's talk about Clubhouse because you're back. Uh, Cheers to look, Brian I, being back on Clubhouse, look, ladies I, and gentlemen. I, I, I never left. I took a, a small sabbatical. I took a small sabbatical. We'll My look, look I, I, I was working for Warner Brothers full time. Yes. I had all these shows out in the marketplace, getting calls about mm -hmm. all these shows that we had developed that we were taking. You know, production companies were pitching all of our stuff. Yeah. Can you walk us through, because, yeah. you know, you got a pa you, you have an idea, you package the idea, you get the sizzle, the pitch deck, yep. and then it's time to pitch. Just walk us through that through yeah. really quickly, okay. two minutes. I'll go, I'll go from start to finish of, of kind of how it goes and where it goes and how. Yes. Take some notes, you guys. Got Get it. your paper out. Go ahead. You have your idea. Yes. You bring it to me. Yes. You say, here's my idea. You either A, have the materials or you don't, and you need them created. Let's say for argument's sake, you don't have anything. You have the idea. You have to build a pitch deck. Yes. What's involved? All the pieces of the pie of what's in that show, who the characters are, synopsis. what the plot is, synopsis, et cetera. You, you have that piece. You then make a sizzle reel, usually under three minutes, so that it tells who the characters are. People get to see the footage. They get to live the life of what is it going to be like when I watch that show. Mm -hmm. The last piece is a budget of some kind. So you have to build a budget to know roughly how much is a show. Now, people out there are probably like, I don't even know how much a show yeah. is. The average show in reality TV mm -hmm. programming is between two and $600,000. Per episode. Per episode. Ooh. So if you're doing 10 episodes, between two and $6 million. If you okay. move into scripted TV, which I also produce and have done many times mm -hmm. and build budgets for, those range between one and three million, usually on a streamer. On something much bigger, a Game of Thrones, let's say, sure. or something huge, could be a hundred million plus. So it could be ten million to probably twenty million dollars per episode. Per episode. Per episode. I remember when remember when Friends, there was a whole thing yes. with Friends, and I think they got it up to like a million per episode per. But no, 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 no. talent. Talent. A million per episode. Yes, that they're was not insane. the only, and they're not the only ones. Yeah. But what they did do is they band together, which is what wow. you need to do if you're okay. talent. You yes. band together, but I want to take you through the whole, the whole yeah. process. So now you have your budget. So you have all your materials. Mm -hmm. Now you want to get with either a production company yes. or straight to a network. Most times if you're new, you don't know any network people. Right. So you're going to a production company like mine who has those relationships mm -hmm. so that I can take your show. And when you bring it to me, if I'm not developing it, we're going to then go into a development phase, which okay. you and I already started. Yep. You said, here's my ideas. Yep. What do you think? I, I, I poked a hundred holes in your stuff and yeah. said this, that, the <laughs> yeah, other, yeah, that. yeah. that's what my company does. We develop the show with yeah. somebody and then we take it out to market. Now it goes out to market. What does that mean? You have to set up the emails, the calls, the zooms, the meetings about that specific project. Yes. Now, if the network says we love it, right. Then all of a sudden, usually they want to talk to the talent on a zoom. So that before they buy the show, they get a feel for who those characters are. Okay. And then they're going to say, cool, now we're going to put a deal together. They then have their attorneys draft up paperwork for a network deal. And at that point, you're like, okay, awesome. The problem is most times 
a network deal because you need an attorney to review it. Entertainment attorney to be exact. Correct. An entertainment attorney to review it. They go under what's called a red line, meaning there's question and answers on both sides, Mm -hmm. both the network and also How long does that normally take? Anywhere between three months and a year. Why? Because there's so many points. So many points. How much money? Right. What's the credit? And so What's many different end? people, What's the EPs, What's the talent. The, there's right. so many pieces. Yeah. Then the talent need individual deals. How long does it take to close those? Mm. So from the time you start with your idea and you pitch it to somebody for the first time, it could be two or three years till that show actually gets shot. Because listen, let's say they give you the green light. Now you got to look at a calendar. When, it, when is the talent available? Mm. When can they go on set? When can the producers do it? That could be pushed out six months to a right. year. So from the time of your idea, it could be years before it ever gets even the thought of getting shot. Hold on, not even done. Oh, we're not even done. Not okay. even done. <laughs> now you filmed it. Now you have to go into post-production. Right. So you have to edit the whole show. Yes. That could take months. Wow. So it's, we're looking at anywhere from six months to like three and a half, four years from the moment that the idea came out, for those of you wondering, because people always ask me, like, how long does it take? How long yeah. does it take? It depends on how much. So there's a new show. Let's say right now, like, let's say there's a new show, a new reality show, or even scripted show. Right. Scripted could even take longer. Why? They have to write all the scripts to, to the show. Right. There's a writer's room. It could be four months, six months, yes. eight months. Yes. It takes forever. It's unbelievable. And, so- and at any point, this is what I want to say, even though you got the green light, at any point, the network can just... Pull the Pull plug. It. How many shows do you have right now that you're working on? Okay, working on is a big umbrella. That's true. Okay, so let me re- let me. So re- I'll break it down for you, break Rough, it down. and roughly, okay. not exact. I probably have fifty shows. Fifty-five zero. Oh. Five zero. Five zero yeah, shows. Fifty shows in some form of. If all the way from we have a kids show that was on air that we're repackaging for a new network mm-hmm. and we had it on one network they pulled the plug during mm. covid and we're now we've been pitching other ones and we're solidifying a deal there okay. we've got at least three or four network deals on shows that we're talking about green lights let's go let's go conversations mm. and then we have probably another 15 that are fully developed that we're pitching either with a production company or straight to network. And then we probably have about another, I would say, I don't even know, 12 to 15 that we have materials and we're developing the sizzles, the decks, the budgets Mm -hmm. on those. Mm -hmm. And then I have a bunch that I fielded that are kind of going to be in the next wave. So at any given time, I have ones at networks, ones at production companies, ones that we're developing, ones that are coming in the door, like maybe your show yes. and evaluating and seeing if it's something that we're actually going to, you know, move forward with. All right. Perfect. Yeah. So how do you pick the person that's going to be the person that pitches your shows? Cause that's an important thing. Yeah. So if it's not me and yes. Lewis, yes. then when we partner with production companies, the reason to partner with a production company that's bigger than my company is mm-hmm. they already have multiple shows at a specific network. Mm. They've been there for 10 years. They have five shows with Bravo as an example, because they have those Bravo shows, the real housewives, this, mm-hmm. the other, and this show fits their company right. and it fits that dynamic. And so we go to those production companies cause we know them really well in the type of shows that they produce. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So your dream project. Yeah. Oh, oh, the one for a hundred million you said? We're coming back to that. Yeah, you didn't gotta, give me an answer. Yeah, I love how you just went full circle. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's gotta be a drama and it's gotta be heartfelt in some way, shape Feature? or form. No, definitely not a film. Not a film. Not okay. a film. I, I love film. I do. I really do. But I'm a big fan of episodic way more for multiple reasons, okay. not just the money, but that's definitely one of them. Dad script. Dad script. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. like? Yeah. He's not laughing. He's, uh-huh. he's not loud. He's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay, yeah. dad, all car. Yeah. Everyone in the, everyone and their mother and father have, <laughs> Literally. have shows, have shows. <laughs> yeah. And so that's the hardest part is I can't get to everybody. Right. I'm, t- I'm busy with what I have, but I will always entertain a really good idea. Okay. So we're going to close with what you just said. Yeah. If someone has an idea, because yeah. everyone does, yep. how do they reach you? Yeah. And how far do you want them to be into the project before they reach you? Get it as best as you can. Mm-hmm. Meaning, if you just are going to put it into a deck, make sure that there's imagery on it. Make sure you have the characters, all the pieces of the puzzle. You can actually Google 
I'm not even kidding. How do I make a pitch deck? YouTube TV. There you go. Everything's on there. Like you could find everything on YouTube, right? Yep. So get that done. If you could shoot a sizzle, shoot it. We all have an iPhone. Mine's on Instagram live right now. Yep. You could shoot stuff on cinematic. Instagram. That Hello, looks, cinematic. I shot a Amazing. Whole, I shot a whole show. Yeah. I told you. I told you. I shot a whole show Amazing. with three iPhone 11s. At the time, iPhone 11 was new. We shot on iPhones. You can do the whole sh- series. It was digital, but you could shoot the whole series. Right. Shoot something. I don't care what it is. Um, and make sure that the package stands out. Mm-hmm. But the biggest thing, and this is really the key, and I've said this on Clubhouse on and, and off to other people. It's all about how you approach me. Mm. Now, if you just come to me and you say, I got an idea, I'm going to blow you off. Remember, Sally, right. first email, <laughs> first email. Sorry. Yes. Gonna, okay, great. Glad you have one. Develop it. Something like that or may not even answer if I don't even know you. Right. Mm-hmm. So the best way to come at me is through a friend that I know. Mm. So somebody knows you, right? We now know each other a a good amount of time. Yep. Hey, Brian, I saw this show. It's really good. You got to check it out. And here's why. Mm. Don't you think now I'm going to probably look at it? Of course. Right. Right. So it's all about your entrance way into how do you get to someone like me? Just like how do I get to someone who's a network executive that I haven't worked with before? Yep. But guess what? They've worked with 15 other network executives I have worked with. Right. And then that network executive introduces me to that network mm. executive, and then I build a relationship. I love it. So we're going to wind this thing down. This yeah. has been amazing. You're amazing. Yeah. The other way to reach Brian is on Clubhouse. Yeah, you can reach If you on guys Clubhouse. don't know there. about Raiders Coffee Talk, make sure that you guys join Clubhouse. If you don't know about the app, go on the Apple app, look up Clubhouse, download it. I'm available on Tuesdays, 1 o'clock p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Brian, when are your, when are your rooms? Here's the thing. It's just like me. Totally random. Just Whenever I random. feel like opening wow. a room. How do people reach you? So people can reach me on my Instagram, which is the real Brian Raider. If anyone contacts you that doesn't have the real Brian Raider in it, it is not Forget me. about it. It's a fugazi. Fugazi. It's fugazi. It's fugazi. You so, go to the ghoul. Okay? Yeah, exactly. So it's a fugazi. It ain't <laughs> so me. Far, it ain't um, it. You know, or you can go to Pictures Up um, Entertainment and you can look up my production company. And yes, you could submit on there. I will say this. Please, please, please have your shit together before you do it. Thank you. We're going to beep that out. (laughs) Thank you, you, Brian. Give it up for Brian, you guys. Thanks, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for joining on Amazon Live. Thank you for joining on YouTube. We love you. We will see you next time on Welcome to My Clubhouse. I'm Sally Cologne. Love you. 